It's a daunting challenge to try to uh, uh, tell the history of the universe in just five minutes. In fact, it's really an impossible task, uh, not maybe for the reason you're thinking, but because there really isn't just a single possible history of the universe. We have today two possible histories, two competing ideas for the history of the universe. So what I really have to do tonight in five minutes is tell you a tale of two universes, one of which is likely the real universe in which we live, the other of which certainly is not. But we can't tell at the moment which is which. We just don't have the observations to distinguish them. Now the first of these universes is based on a concept you probably all learned in school, the idea of the Big Bang. Um, except that uh, we've had to add a lot of bells and whistles to this theory in order to make it conform with what we actually observe. So it begins with the idea that for reasons we don't understand, the universe sprang from nothing about 13.7 billion years ago uh, in a fireball of space, time, matter, and energy, and has been an expanding and cooling. If it began that way, it would likely begin with a very wild distribution of matter and energy and space, which is twisted and distorted. Nothing like what we see of the universe in the large. So to fix it up, we actually have to add something to the theory, which is a period of extraordinary expansion driven by some peculiar form of energy uh, that causes the universe to expand by Google, or maybe Googles of Googles, or Googles of Googles of Googles, in just 10 to the minus 30 seconds. So rapidly and so fast that an initially twisted, distorted, and non-uniform universe becomes silky smooth. <laughs> and then this inflationary, whatever energy is driving this, uh, disappears in a flash into uh, ordinary matter, quarks, electrons, matter with which we're familiar. Now, once the universe has been set up in this way, from the next nine billion years, life is pretty simple. Uh, the universe simply ex expands at a slower and slower rate, and matter condenses into more and more complex structures. So within a few seconds, you have the first protons and neutrons, the first uh, complex nuclei. Within a few hundred thousand years, you have the first atoms. Uh, within the first hundred million years, the first stars and galaxies. And um, after about nine billion years, you begin to have galaxies like our Milky Way and stars like our sun. And just when we finally get to that stage, something completely different takes over the universe. A mysterious entity that we call today dark energy, or sometimes we call it quintessence. Another form of energy that is causing the expansion of the universe to speed up again. And the more it takes over the universe, the longer it's taken over the universe, uh, the more it begins to empty out the universe. So by today, 4.7 billion years later, okay, we're just beginning to see this emptying take place. We can detect that it's taking place, come back in a trillion years, and the universe will look something like this. Okay? It will end as an um, empty, uninhabitable wasteland. And that is the end of tale number one of the universe. Uh, it begins with a bang and ends with a whimper. However, there is a second possibility that has arisen, that has been uh, developed in just the last few years, which seems like a viable contender. An idea of a universe which is really endless, in which the evolution of the universe is cyclic, and time goes on forever into the past, and space and time go on forever into the future. Now, this idea is based on a rather recent reconsideration of what might be the geometry of the universe. Not the usual three space-time dimensions in which we live, but in fact, a universe which may have, well, more than one such three-dimensional world, say, two parallel universes, one of which is the universe we are used to moving around with, and another one separated along an extra dimension, an extra unaccessible dimension to us. Um, there's another world separated by a, a small amount. Now, this idea may seem very strange and bizarre, but uh, this idea is strongly suggested by recent ideas in theoretical physics as what we need to explain why the forces of nature have the properties that they do. So if we run with that idea, one now has a new possibility that there was actually something before the Big Bang, say these two empty worlds, and there was a force that drew them together, a force actually that is very much closely related to dark energy, which drew them together and caused them to collide. So suddenly, from an empty space, you suddenly have a space, actually two universes, filled with matter and radiation. So that instead of a big bang, we have, if you like, a big splat. And it's a big splat, which is the origin of all the matter that composes us today. 
so that when these two worlds come flying apart, in fact, each of them is filled with hot matter, actually just like we had at the end of inflation in tail number one, but not caused by inflation, caused by this collision. So because the conditions are so similar, what's going to happen next, over the next 13.7 billion years to the present, and in fact, what's going to happen all the way for the next trillion years, will be nearly indistinguishable, very difficult to distinguish from the first picture. So at this point, in fact, we, can't, we don't have measurements fine enough to distinguish the two possibilities. But what happens next is dramatically different, because in the first picture, that's the end of the story. And here, it, if, if you like, is just the beginning of the story. Because what's happened to the dark energy is that it's now emptied out these two universes, just like they were at the beginning. And it also has the feature that it begin, has a force effect that begins to draw them back together again. So they splat again. Matter is, re, is recreated, uh, new galaxies and stars are created, planets, stars, life, etc., and the universe cycles through. So in fact, we have these two radically different pictures of the, what's going to, what ha where the universe came from and where it's going. Um, I'd love to tell you next how we will distinguish them. I'd love to tell you next why this is crucial, not just for cosmology, but I think for the future of science generally. But um, my five minutes is up, so to learn more, please ask me, email me, uh, go to the website, uh, and even check out the book. Thank you.